Welcome everyone. Uh, this is a June session of the cohort for the SLE Mac on Lifestyles. And today, uh, myself, Laura Suillo, I am UNEP Sustainable Lifestyles Outreach and Communication Specialist. And I'll be interviewing Denise Conceliero uh, from Brazil, from ACATU, in which she serves as Education Manager. Hello, Denise, how are you? Hi, everyone. I'm really glad to be here talking to you today. It's nice to get to know all of you. Well, uh, ACATU's work is more kind of defined towards the term sustainable consumption, but I wanted to ask what drew you to uh, sustainable lifestyles and education, because they're, of course, very tight. Yeah, so I think it's all about purpose, mainly. Uh, the idea of being able to work with something you believe in and you practice in your everyday life, it's, it's the main reason that I was drawn to work with sustainable lifestyles. Uh, after working a few uh, a few years with uh, environmental issues here in Brazil, we got to the conclusion that it's not only about environmental, it's all about our lifestyle and how our lifestyle impacts all of these questions. So it, it's about finding our true purpose and, and practicing it and uh, sensitizing and engaging others in the same in the same practice and the same uh, way of living. Yeah, and of course, that has a, a whole different perspective coming from Brazil. How does that context uh, change the occasions of within lifestyles? It's, it's actually talking about how lifestyles work in Brazil. It, it's a challenge because Brazil is such a continental country. So we have many different lifestyles here. So we have people living in, in Huda areas. We have very urban areas. We have... The Amazon forest, we have uh, uh, the cold parts of the country that no one gets to know, but there are some really cold parts in the country. So it's, it's, uh, it's a challenge because all, all lifestyles are very different. So to find one that is common between all Brazilian, it, it's an impossible task. So we got to always remember this, this regional issues when you're trying to work with lifestyles and education. Then, uh, well, today you're presenting to students, well, not only students, but people who are hoping to be practitioners in the field in the future. So if we, we wanted to know how was your career and how did it lead to where you are today? Actually, it, it's kind of unusual path, uh, my personal path. I, I, I'm actually a lawyer. I studied law at, at school at university. So, and I was really early age when I started the university. So I, there was a whole expectation in all of my family members uh, for me to become a lawyer or a judge that are actually very prestigious careers here in Brazil. And after I practiced law for a, a bit for a while, I, I saw that I decided and I confirmed that it's not, uh, it's not my path, not something that really truly satisfied me in terms of personal achievement. So I decided to my, my, my career, my path, and to work towards uh, NGOs. So Brazil is about 20 years ago, we've had a, 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 a very incipient uh, third sector and lots of NGOs were being founded and starting to work with social projects. So I started my career with these NGOs, with this social purpose, behind my professional activities. So I started in this, in the sense I, I made all my family really sad, really disappointed and decided to work with NGOs in another field, another career path. So I did do some uh, professional, uh, some technical uh, additional studies. So I studied education, I studied uh, communication, I studied several other path, career paths. And then I started to work deep NGOs and social projects as a role. So this took me to work with environmental issue, environmental projects, and from this environmental projects, I, I uh, started to work at ACATU about 10 years ago or so. So, and this has been my career choice for a while now. So uh, this is a very unusual path. So I started working as a lawyer <laughs> that has nothing to do with this, the career path that I'm developing right now. But it, was it a deliberate transition or was it something that just came up 
due to the opportunities that that you found along the way no it was on purpose i i i decided after working a few a few let's say i'd like to say years but i i didn't have the patience to make it years after working a few months with law uh, i got to the conclusion that if this wasn't my path and i should work with something with purpose with a, a social project behind it so it was a, a, a career path that i decided and i built along the years along my transition and then now i uh, would like you to talk about your work and akatu's work and yeah. how does it intertwine with sustainable lifestyles and education and sure. something that so akatu is as, as an institute and, and it's, it's it's headquarters in the sao paulo here in brazil in southeast area of brazil and it's an ngo as i said it has been founded in 2001 it has about it has completed 21 years this year and it works uh to mobilize the population uh, towards social sustainability and practices through through conscious consumption so our main uh, or sustainable consumption our main goal is to engage our population into practicing social uh, conscious or sustainable consumption uh we like to Tell a little bit. I'd like to tell a little bit, of, a little bit about how the name Akatu and what it means. So Akatu is a Tupi, that's an indigenous language word, and A means seed or word, and Katu means good or better. So Akatu is uh, translating it from from old Tupi to English. It means that we want to be a good seed for a better word, or we do want to help uh, uh, help engaging good individuals for a better collective. So this is the idea behind the name of ECA2. And, and uh, to describe what we understand as conscious consumption for us, the term conscious consumption means that is the consumption with better impacts. So the idea is to work with a tool that help people understand their place or their role in this transition to towards a, a more sustainable world, a more sustainable lifestyle. Our mission is to contribute to a faster transition towards sustainable lifestyles uh, to, for the well-being of the society by means of sustainable consumption and production. So we do believe that sustainable consumption and production are the means to get to a well-being society with a sustainable lifestyle. So we do uh, our work uh, here at Akatu in three main uh, in three main perspectives. So the first one we do for from the start, Akatu has been uh, producing data and producing information on uh, on conscious consumption and the adoption of conscious consumption and sustainable lifestyle habits here in Brazil. So we have been creating methodologies, research, and studies to study how Brazilians to, to uh, measure, to inform, and to gather data on how Brazilian's uh, lifestyles is developing through the years. So we've done several publications and several research and studies, both quantitative and qualitative studies on the barriers and the triggers to behavior change in consumption. So this is a, a, a periodical study that Akatu produces every two or three years uh, to evaluate and to uh, monitor how Brazilians are uh, including sustainable lifestyle habits or conscious consumption habits and practices to their everyday life. In, uh, based on these studies and in this work, we've developed a, a diagnosis tool that we call uh, TCC in Portuguese or CCT. Uh, it's a tool that we use on our everyday work uh, to measure, to uh, evaluate the level of conscious, consciousness. This is a horrible word for us to speak, for us Brazilian speakers to pronounce, but the level of consciousness and consumption and helping them and helping them to raise awareness of these individuals. So the idea that is that this is a tool that is available online. Everyone can assess this tool. Of course, this is in Portuguese because it's focused on Brazilians, but uh, this is a tool that we have, uh, a, a website, a platform 
that helps people to identify how they're doing in terms of adopting process consumption in their everyday life. So you, you begin this, 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 uh, this evaluation form and you answer a few questions and you have the, the results developed and, and customized for your choices and then your answers. And then you receive some tips and some uh, recommendations in terms of evolving towards a more sustainable lifestyle. And this is a tool that we use on our everyday works as a uh, um, diagnosis to, uh, to help us develop our projects and implement our activities and to, um, to monitor and to follow up on the results of our, our awareness raising activities on our projects here at ACATU. The second line of work of ACATU is through communication. So we do have a strong work with communication strategies and projects focused on awareness raising of the public in general of Brazilians and especially internet users here in Brazil in general. So we do develop a series of contents and, um, and tools to help sensitize Brazilians uh, towards adopting a more sustainable lifestyle. So we do have apps, we do have games, we do have websites, we do have uh, several other tools and strategies that we make available for Brazilian population uh, for them to adopt more uh, conscious consumption practices at home. Uh, we do have this, this, this tool that we use a lot that we call it mobilizing tips. This is something that we do on a regular basis that is basically an equivalence, uh, um, equivalence uh, calculation that helps people to understand the impacts and to get to know the impacts of their consumption choices. So this is something that you use a lot in order to help Brazilians and to sensitize Brazilians into understanding that their personal choices makes a difference. So to help uh, get over this idea that just one person changing their habits has no impact in terms of sustainable lifestyle. So this too is, uh, it's, very common and you use it a lot on an everyday basis works in communication. I brought one of this, this we call this tips, but it's something like recommendations. I brought one of this, this, this materials to get to present to you. This is, we, it's very common here in Brazil that people waste their pizza edges. They get to, get to eat the rest of the pizza, but they throw out the pizza edge. This is a huge waste. So. Uh, because we eat lots of pizzas here in Brazil. It's, it's an Italian a root uh, based uh, population. So we do consume lots of pizzas. And we, in the sense, we have lots of waste in terms of pizza edges. So if half of the pizza edges that are thrown away here in Brazil, uh, in half of this, this, this pizza edges throw away, uh, it's used to produce all of this, this this edge is used for the volume of water that's enough to fill 18 Olympic pools. So if you say this in terms of the water, I don't know, 200,000 liters of water, no one gets, gets to know how much is it because it's such a huge number. It's something so, uh, so out of everyone realities that we don't, don't get to understand the real impact of it. Oh, so 3,000 uh, liters of water, it's something that we don't, uh, we don't get in touch with our everyday life, so we don't understand. But if I say that we're going to waste eight, 18 Olympic tools, Olympic pools of water, it's something that you can relate to, you know, you have seen an Olympic pool, so you know how much of water we're talking about. So this is idea behind our tips or recommendations that we produce on a regular basis about several issues and several uh, themes that ACATU works is related to. This is another one focused on water. I brought two uh, focused on water consumption, but of course we do have several ones on energy consumption, on waste production, on uh, on food. So you can check our website or it's akatu.org.br and you see lots of these recommendations and tips. This one talks about uh, the reuse of water and this is to give an idea of people of how much they waste water 
where they don't collect the water after the washing machine water cycle is over. So this is this tip uh, states that if you collect one month worth of water from the washing machine after it's used, you have enough water to do 130 flushes on your toilet. So this is a huge amount of water that you can save if you just collect the water for one month after using the washing machine. So this, this whole idea behind our tips, our recommendations, it, that is a communication tool that we use a lot to sensitize Brazilians into adopting um, conscious consumption practices and advocates in their everyday life. This is another example of uh, our communication work. We work with several advertising agencies in order to produce campaigns that are focused on sustainability issues and not on publicity itself, not on sales and marketing directly. So we do have two campaigns that are uh, current under execution. One is focused, again, on water. So this is focused on the several water restrictions that Brazil has gone through in the last years. This is a campaign that started in 2014, 2015. That says that what Agua Pede Agua is the name of the campaign, but the idea is how much we got to uh, recognize the value of water and learn to consume it in a more rational and, and effective way. And the other one, the other campaign in the left is a campaign called Novo PF. Uh, we have, uh, I don't know if it, I don't think it's something that other countries have, but this is the idea of when you go to a restaurant and you order the ordinary menu, the regular menu, uh, it's usual in Brazil to receive a really large plate, something that most of people aren't able to eat one, one meal. So the idea is to try to uh, get the restaurants to, to participate, to support the idea, to get the customers, the consumers to participate in order to have sizes of the plates of the dishes. So you can choose if you have a small, a medium or a large plate and the restaurant will have offer you the same meal, the same food, but in a smaller or in a bigger size in order to fulfill your, your hungriness. So this is the idea behind it. You don't have one simple, uh, one common uh, plate that in here in Brazil is very large and causes a lot of waste. So talking a little bit, a bit about the, the part that I work, that I'm responsible here at ACATU, I work with educational projects most of the educational projects are focused on youth, on children and adolescents. The main project in this area is Educato, and Educato is the project I've been leading for about eight years now. It's, it's a continuous project, and it's, it's based on a web platform, on a learning network that we've been creating and developing through the years. The idea that this online platform is the support for a network that uh, promotes several activities. We've been working, of course, mostly online over the past two and a half years because of the pandemic restrictions. But the idea is that we do have a, a hybrid format that uh, includes per, in-person activities, so uh, activities in schools uh, all over the country, in-person and online activities, especially with educators. We do have this platform focused on a specific uh, cycle of the Brazilian basic education that is called the fundamental education here. It's from first to ninth grade, so kids from uh, students from six, seven years old to 14, 15 years old. Uh, but this is the start of the process. This is uh, the idea is to, to begin to work sustainable. Uh, consumption and, and sustainable lifestyles from a very early age. So uh, this is what we do today, but this is developing into working on both ends of the cycle. So we are working, we're starting to work with younger children and with older adolescents, with youth uh, to promote the sustainable lifestyles. The idea is that the, the website or the platform makes available offers a several uh, methodologies and contents for the educators and teachers to work this sustainable, the sustainable to promote 
learning about sustainability issues and to help them to build together with their students uh, practical projects to get all this knowledge to work. So the idea is to do something that's both uh, in person and online, but also that mixes uh, learning methodologies with practical approach. So these are the, mo the major differentials of Acad Educato and uh, uh, it's what I believe that's been doing it work so well through last years, uh, so through all these years. Uh, the idea that the platform especially and the contents directed to the students have to be not only very much interactive because it's, it's something that's really attractive to this, to these kids, to the students, and also has to, uh, to bring the logic, to bring the fun to sustainability learning. So uh, the idea is that you gotta make it and through our platform, we are able to implement it. You gotta make it learning and practicing sustainability fun and attractive to these young students. Here I have some examples of some photos of this work. I brought a few that are from 2016. We've done several work with several with sustainability issues, but these are examples. For instance, we did in 2016, a work with about preventive health with several kids all around the country. We developed a game called Germ Combat that is it's really fun and use it promoting marathons all over the country to help people understand the importance of hand washing, of washing hands and how to do it in practice. This is a game that through the last two and a half years has been disseminating itself around the country because it's a very useful tool to learn about uh, preventive health. And in 2016, we also did a very strong work here in, in the state that I'm, we are located here at some, in Sao Paulo, talking about the use of electric energy. So the, the consumption, consumption of electric energy and how to do it in a more conscious way was the theme of a project that we developed through 2016 here in Sao Paulo. This is another example of how we make this work, mixing uh, in-person strategies with online technology and uh, support. This is the numbers of Educato nowadays. So this actually is from December to 2021. But this gives you one idea. This is Brazil. So uh, we have uh, people participating at, at Educato from different regions of Brazil, from north, from south, from northeast. We have several schools from different uh, cities, from different sites, from different locations. So we have rural schools, we have urban schools, we have huge schools, we have small schools, we have indigenous schools. So uh, all of this, this different characteristics are uh, present in the participants of the platform. Today, we have about 70,000 people uh, working with us or registered to the platform. Most of them are students, but we do also have a very large number of teachers participating in the platform. What is very important for us to work as a team and to make this combination of teachers and students uh, doing the learning process and in practicing sustainability on their pedagogical practice every day. And now to finish uh, something new, something uh, exciting that I'm working right now that is new for us. As I said, we are developing, Educato is the starting point, but we are developing uh, education activities through the other uh, parts of the, uh, of the cycles of our basic education. So this is a project that we are developing right now <laughs> with older kids. Sorry, I don't know why it came back. So I'm gonna leave it here. So this is a project that we are developing with older kids, with high school students. Uh, this is called uh, Leaping Climates or Climate Olympics. Uh, the idea is that we have activities focused on climate crisis. And these students are forming teams to have a healthy competition between them and to, the help, to stimulate them to develop solutions, both on reduction the emission of uh, greenhouse gases, also uh, in terms of mitigating the impacts of climate crisis. So 
uh, it's a healthy competition because it's Olympics. The, the ones with the better solutions will be awarded. But uh, the idea is to simulate all over the country the production and the creation of these solutions by the students, by high, high school students here in Brazil. We're starting this with a pilot project that is focused in Sao Paulo, that is the city we're based on. But this is a much bigger project. This is the first step of the project. We're, we are right now co-creating the strategies and the methodologies for the project with educators from Sao Paulo. But the idea is that in the next step of these projects, over the next months and next years, we'll be able, we, we'll be able to expand it and to make it national. So take it, this idea and this Olympics to schools all over the country. It's very exciting because this is the time to talk about climate crisis and everyone is very eager to hear about it. And this is the project that we are building with students, with educators to help respond to this demand. Uh, it was really, I'm really glad to present a little bit about Akatsu's work for you. And thank you so much for listening. No, well, thank you, Denise. And now we're running back to the presentation. I wanted to ask you a little bit, you know, uh, the students, uh, the cohort is trying right now to prepare a summit for September. So I wanted to ask you, since you've been so, so successful in escalating uh, ideas and also reaching out to important partners, like how do you do that? And what would you recommend to come up and kind of amplify the messages and the ideas that you have as an organization? Yeah, the idea here behind our, the scale up process is that you have you have to have something that can be customized to different realities. You can get there to, with a formula that is completely ready. Uh, if you have something that can be, uh, the methodology is one and it's behind everything we do, but we gotta be able to customize certain aspects of the project in order to better fulfill it, the needs of, uh, of different institutions. So when you get to school in Sao Paulo, they have some needs. When you get to school in the Northeast area, they have other needs. When you get to school that is an indigenous school, they have other needs. So you gotta have the, the core of the project that is be able to adjust it and to customize it to each and every reality that we're gonna face during the project implementation. Yeah, and how have you worked with different stakeholders and what criteria do you have to reach out to specific organizations? For example, I see you work with Unilever, Nestle, like very big companies, what kind of criteria? Mm -hmm. To, yeah, we do have uh, we do have different kind of stakeholders in this project specifically. So we have the financial supporters, as case of Unilever. Unilever is, is is one of the has been one of the financial supporters of the project, and uh, and is not the only one. We have several companies supporting the project activities, and we do have the stakeholders that are directly involved with the pedagogical part of the project. So we do work directly with. Uh, secret education secretariats all over the country, so public institutions and, and municipalities and, 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 and state secretariats are directly involved in implementation of the projects, this project specifically, and they are very strategic partners, in, especially in the part of implementation. So the companies are, are part of the project mostly as financial support for providing financial support for the project and the educational authorities are part of the implementation of the pedagogical part, especially. Okay, uh, so before we leave the floor to everyone else, I uh, wanted to ask you to, if you have some piece, a piece of advice for anyone wanting to work in, in this sector in the future. Yeah, I was, when I saw this question, I was thinking about how could I be very positive in terms of education especially considering the, the, the effects of this last years in educational area. I think this is a very challenging moment to work with edu education, in education for sustainable lifestyle is part of it. And uh, we're gonna face, uh, we've taken, we've had several steps back because of the, the whole pandemic question and, and restrictions. But I also think uh, this is an opportunity. So we have been forced to, uh, to work in different parameters with education over the last years, especially the last two and a half years. And this is a, a huge opportunity for us to work uh, in a different way in terms of educating people to, to have a more sustainable lifestyle. So 
uh, be resilient and try to remember that it's important to innovate and to take this opportunity that is being brought by this crisis into developing new ideas and implementing new methods. So be really resilient and 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 take the opportunity that the, this challenge, this 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 difficult time is bringing us. And thank you so much, Denise. We hope to see you again in another session of the Sustainable Lifestyles and Education Leaderships. Goodbye. <laughs>